Hi guys, and welcome back. We're in chapter 13. And in chapter 13, we're going to talk about completing uh, business proposals and business reports. So in this one, we're going to explain how to complete reports after your uh, that affect your credibility, create specific, specific and persuasive proposals, uh, demonstrate excellent thinking by applying a precision oriented type style of reports and designing your reports to aid in decision making. Um, project objectivity in your reports and how to review reports for effectiveness. So are you ready to get started? Great, I am too. I really hope that you are enjoying these, this series and um, that it's helping you to bring this together with the other learning material providing, provided to you, as well as our coffee and conversation discussions. So let's go, let's, let me share my screen now. And we're there. Again, this is chapter 13 um, from the book, Business Communication, Developing Leaders for a Networked World by Peter Codone. So our learning objective today is to explain how, uh, to compl how completed reports affect our credibility, uh, create specific and persuasive proposals, demonstrate excellent thinking by applying a precision-oriented style to reports, design our reports to aid in decision-making, project objectivity in our reports, and review our reports for effectiveness and fairness. So proposals. Proposals deal with allocating resources, explain business goals, and vary in length and format. So here are the components of business proposals. They include the cover page, executive summary, current situation, specific objectives, deliverables, overview, timeline, results, enhancers, and price, pricing and budgeting. That's in any proposal. It happens with proposals that you'd have to send out to um, in response to request uh, from uh, new possible new clients that want to do business with you or looking for a business partner to help them with a particular situation. It happens internally when you're making a, re a proposal request up the chain of command to the CEO levels and above. It happens, um, it could happen for a particular committee you're sitting on, government committee, our diversity committee, or any of those uh, uh, top things that a people in a group would like to see. You could be sitting on a nonprofit board and need that proposal, your church board. Um, there's various different areas that the components of the business proposal are very important. So <clears throat> demonstrating excellent thinking and applying a precision oriented style. So the style is the report offers accurate, well-documented facts, good reasoning for conclusions and a solid basis for recommendations. Foundations must be a well-stated business problem or a challenge. So I want you to look at this, uh, this, um, uh, what do you call it, triangle. Uh, you start with the business problems and you're gonna outline those. So then you go to the facts, you go to conclusions and then finally it will be the recommendations. So demonstrating excellent thinking, we have precision oriented reports and they start with a clear statement of the business problem or challenge. And then we use that fact-based language and document secondary research and avoid plagiarism. We, um, and, and we avoid plagiarism by stating specifically, you know, embedding in the text where we got that information from so people can easily reference that material. And then we go to base recommendations on facts and conclusions in the report. And we, we, then we provide specific and actionable recommendations. And so problem statement and business challenge. Here's um, one that shows, uh, going back to this virtual reality example we used in a previous um, example. And to, 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 this is just too much, less effective. It's just, it's over the top here. So then a more effective would be giving details. Um, I think this is a lot to read and this kind of changes, it's a paradigm shift. And when we use a lot and when we don't use a lot. Back earlier, um, we in some earlier slides, we talked about 
not just getting to the point, but in this particular one, we have to state why we're doing what we're doing. And so virtual reality tools increasingly allow users to experience films and other content in more lifelike, realistic and multi-sensory sensory, sensory, and even adventuresome ways. One indicator of the growing demand of, for virtual reality content is the demand for virtual reality headsets. In 2018, global shipments of virtual reality headsets amounted to 13.5 million. The demand for virtual reality headsets is expected to more than double by 2023. Yet a small overall percentage of consumers own virtual reality headsets or regularly view virtual reality content. Most experts suggest virtual reality as a mainstream experience is still three to five years in the future. And that's based on Hollinger in 2018. So we provided information about our, um, where we got this information from a credible source and related back to when he wrote or she wrote the paper in 2018. Now, many companies in the hospitality and tourism sector are exploring how to create new business opportunity with virtual reality. Some companies have already succeeded in using virtual reality content to market their sites and services, as well as enhance tour experiences. Yet, while investments in virtual reality may create competitive advantage, they involve significant risk and uncertainty. In this section, we describe two emerging functions of virtual reality in our industry, marketing sites and services, and enhancing the travel experience. Then we describe the benefits and risk of developing and adopting virtual reality content. Overall, the aim of our report is to evaluate the business opportunities of developing virtual reality contents for our caucus tours. So, in this particular example, uh, this problem statement provides sufficient context to communicate the opportunities of developing virtual reality. Yet in each paragraph, it addresses the problems associated with developing virtual reality um, content. So uncertainty and risk because of virtual reality is not a mainstream experience yet, right? All right. Um, less effective statement, we give this one since 2013, we have evaluated guest satisfaction and future intentions among um, conference attendees with an annual salary, or annual survey, I'm sorry. This report provides the results of this year's survey as well as a year over year comparison for the past five years. Well, this statement fails to explain the basic purpose and value behind conducting the surveys. Now, here's one that's much better that explains things. Guest satisfaction has always been the foundation for repeat business with so many reviews of hotels readily available to meeting planners. Achieving high guest satisfaction ratings is more important now than ever. Since 2013, we have used an annual survey to evaluate guest satisfaction, assess future intentions of conference attendees and determine how we can improve guest satisfaction. This report provides the results of this year's survey, as well as year-to-year -year comparisons for the, five past, for the past five years. So the difference in this one and the previous one we just looked at is by adding a few additional thoughts in just two sentences, this problem statement establishes the importance of using the survey to improve the survey, guest satisfaction, and consequently repeat business. So furthermore, it explains the increased urgency of this effort. So as we can see, this is a much better process than the one before, or statement than the statement before. Use fact-based language. You can raise the credibility of your report by supplying the facts with precision, providing supporting details for your conclusions, and carefully dealing with predictions and cause effect statements responsibly citing your research sources, all right? So using fact-based language, the less and the more effective, nearly all of our respondents reported satisfaction with their conference experiences, that's less, but more overall, the vast majority, 84%, we gave a number 
of our respondents reported satisfaction with their conference information. You see how, what are you talking about more? Um, how much is more? Who, who are your people? What are you talking about? So by giving the facts, 84%, you're doing much better. So using fact-based language continues. Many of our prior customers express interest in v, uh, viewing VR content as they make their tour decisions. One more effective way would be many of our prior customers express interest in viewing VR content as they make their tour decisions among customers who owned uh, tethered uh, VR headsets. Nearly three quarters, 73% express interest from mobile, mobile VR headsets owners and customers without VR heads. Says. In the survey, we suggested we could send them Google Cardboard headsets, roughly one quarter, 28% express interest. So there seems to be some interest for the VR, especially uh, people want to see, I'm, I'm one that I like to see it when I get there sometimes, but if you can show me things that I'm going to see now and I get to fill them, and then I feel them even more so once I get there, I may be okay. I don't know. What about you? What are your thoughts? Using fact-based language. And so here's some examples of using fact-based language. Uh, the one below provides a, a reference to that information instead of just saying it. They, they provide a reference and that's a difference. Document secondary research and avoid plagiarism by please provide a reference list at the end of the report that contains all your sources. Provide citations to indicate the information you have drawn from other sources. And there are a variety of documentation systems, including APA and MLA. All right, there's a variety of them. And so here's uh, APA versus MLA. And of course, depending on the school you're at, they may have their particular source of referencing information, All right? So how do we avoid plagiarism? Document all references in the ideas of others, include direct quotations, paraphrases, and barred ideas. So basing recommendation facts and conclusion, fact, okay, fact. Did you see all these facts? Conclusions, recommendation, develop short VR films for each this looks great. I love this. What are your thoughts? All right, take a careful look at that. Now, would you be impressed if you saw this? Here are the facts, here are the conclusions, and, and here's my recommendation based on the conclusions. So make recommendations, uh, recommendations specific and actionable. Um, send VR sets, headsets to key customers. Send inexpensive mobile versus send inexpensive mobile VR headsets to key customers at an estimated cost of ten thousand dollars. One thousand dollar Google cardboard headsets with a cost of ten dollars for headset, including shipping. We can send mobile VR headsets to prior customers identified as the most likely to purchase future tours. We recommend evaluating their purchase behavior to create an ROI analysis of the mobile VR headset. I like that. Okay, and here's some more specific items. So designing your reports to help decision makers, they, they need to be easy to navigate, guys. Not everyone will read it from start to finish. Please provide a familiar structure, front matter, text, back matter. So common structures for business reports. Um, the components of a survey report, include executive summary, introduction and background, methodology, findings, conclusions, recommendations, and references. And recommendations for a trend report include the executive summary, oh, sorry about that, executive summary, introduction, background, the trend analysis, recommendation, references, and appendix. Common structures for business reports continue. Components of a business plan our cover page, executive summary, business description and vision, general company, uh, business objectives, description of the market to market analysis, description of products and services, organization and management, marketing and sales strategy, financial statements or management appendices. Components of a business proposal 
which is different from a business plan, a business proposal has the cover page, the executive summary, the current situation, specific objectives, the deliverables overview, timeline, results enhancers, and pricing. So here's components of a strategic, strategic plan. It has your cover page, your executive summary, your SWOT analysis, vision, mission, and values, strategic objectives, action items, implementation process, evaluation. Now, here are the components of a progress report. It has your executive summary, introduction, background, accomplishments, problems, future plans, timelines, conclusion, references, and appendices. So th these are all common structures of plans. Uh, components of a SWOT analysis include, if you're just doing a SWOT strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats analysis, you have the executive summary, the strengths, the weaknesses, the opportunities, the threats, recommendation, references and appendices. These are all reports that in a common day-to-day -day business practice, uh, we are going to have some of these, especially as you enter the management levels of an organization. Now, components of a marketing plan, then we have the executive summary, the market research, product, competition, mission, mission statement, marketing strategies, pricing, positioning, branding, budget, and marketing uh, goals and objectives. Components of an annual report are includes, and we get a lot of annual reports if you're part of a business, or you work at a business, or you're a part of the 401k, uh, profit sharing, any kind of plan that you have assets within, you can see an annual report, and that's going to have a cover, a narrative statements, a letter to stockholders from the CEO, functions as executive summary, a company overview, mission and uh, mission statement, and history. And then that's followed by the financial statements, that, which includes the income statement, the balance sheet, cash flow, and author's re uh, auditor's report. You always want the auditor's report that goes along with that cycle. If it's an annual report, that means the auditor's report for the, for the year because decisions are going to be made based on that annual report. You have references and appendices. Um, components of a financial report. So front matter, letter or memo of transmittal, the cover, the title page, copyright notice, credits, table of contents, list of tables and figures, preference or forward acknowledgement. So these are components of a formal report. Tell the story of your report with an executive summary. And that's what executive summary means. You're, you're telling a story. So you're summarizing the most important contents of your report. You're including key findings, conclusions and recommendations and should be a one page per 10 to 20 pages in the report. And so um, usually when I do a um, executive summary, I have to do these things when I'm making a proposal to a company or um, I'm in a company and they want me to provide an executive summary of what's going on. Providing clear headings that support a storyline Elements of this, including heading structures, should stay consistent throughout. Title is descriptive. The story of the report includes business problem or challenge, opportunities and risk, options, advice, and recommendation. These are providing clear headings that support a storyline. Creating headlines to help decision makers navigate the document. Um, here are some examples here. Uh, take a look at them. Uh, pause for a moment and take a look. This next one is on table 13.8, providing clear review statements. Here's some examples and none. So take a good look at these, read through them and see where the effectiveness is. So using charts to support your storyline or report. And like we talked about charts earlier, you always wanna use these charts to, um, especially the higher up you're going to make it, or the higher level these people that the people or the individuals that you're making the presentation to, you wanna make sure that reports like this are included in your summary so that they have an opportunity to take a glance at it. I remember going into um, meetings with the CEO of the bank or the CEO, uh, the local CEO, the regional CEO at Invesco, I would have to, the charts, 
<clears throat> you only get 10 minutes to make a presentation. Sometimes you have 10 minutes because they're so busy. And in that 10 minutes, I have to have things that were pertinent that I had thoroughly researched, I provide to them and then they'll let me know whether they want me to go on with the next um, details of the report or they wanna set up a separate meeting with more people in it to go on over the details of that report. So applying bulletin, bulletin is effective. Um, People don't want to read long sentences. They're, they're, they, it's, time is of the essence for many people. All right, you want to take a look at that. So create a cover page, a table of contents and appendices. So cover page includes a title, names of those who wrote or are submitting the report and date. So the name of the authors, table of content is expected for nearly any report over 10 pages long, all right? Appendices provide reference materials financial statements, marketing materials, uh, detailed data tables, brochures, references, resumes, and biographies um, in appendices section. Achieving objectivity and positivity through tone, suggestions achieve a positive can-do tone, always, always in your writing. Uh, project objectivity and a sense that you are providing information, analysis, and advice that is sound, reliable, and unbiased. Ensure that your enthusiasm and strong positive emotions do not appear to cloud your judgment. Assessing key features of a completed report, two kinds of business reports are out there, business trend or business issue, and they're based on primary and secondary research, all right? and based on survey results, primary research. The key features of a report, guys, that, and they include value of, to decision makers that they bring, precision, documentation, easy navigation, and objectivity. These are key to providing things to them. Slide deck format. It works for uh, survey reports and visually stronger and more creative reports. Reviewing your reports for fairness and effectiveness. Here's some tips. Discuss the report with the ultimate decision makers so you can best tailor the final products to their needs. As I stated earlier, I'd have 10 minutes to discuss my reports with CEOs that I was meeting with, whether it was a CEO at the bank, uh, Mr. Um, Bill Rogers at SunTrust Bank at the time, or it was a CEO at Invesco, the guy in, that was over the North, Northern, um, North America area of Invesco. Invesco is a European company at the time I was there. And I had a North American CEO. And so I had to discuss things with him before I moved on to the next. Uh, run through it numerous times, each time considering a different perspective. Review for typographical, typographical or mechanical errors. And that's it for chapter 13. I hope you enjoyed uh, chapter 13 and understanding um, the things we need to do in making the best business presentations. Business pre presentations can be uh, a bit complex and that's why they take more time, but they tell a better a story that we want to share. And a lot of times they make the difference between knowing that you are management or the next level material versus not by the way that report is put together and explained. So we always wanna make sure that we're doing the best things possible to get that report in the best way. This chapter has been an excellent chapter. I rarely see sources that provide so much detail in what you need in the standard reports. So you have a jewel here with this one and keep that under your, your wraps so that as you're working in your companies and making presentations, you have something to go by and you know what's required in those reports. That's it for chapter 13. I'm Dr. Marilyn Carroll and I'll see you in Coffee and Conversations. Take care.